First of all, much apology. I, this is my fourth function of the day, uh, and I travel from uh, Rangsit area, so there's a, just a little traffic jam, uh, but that can be very lengthy in time. Uh, I, I have been preparing for this very important event because, uh, as you have seen from the introduction video, uh, this is the issue that I have been involved uh, at least uh, uh, not long ago uh, that I have the opportunity to participate with the United Nations uh, uh, Disaster Risk Reduction Program. And uh, it has been a very uh, enthusiastic and uh, eventful uh, cooperation among member countries indeed. So uh, for this uh, Asian Business Forum on Risk Reduction and Resilience uh, Building, uh, is, I think, another uh, collaboration that I think we need uh, to be able to concretely identify the risk in front of us uh, and at the same time uh, learn and share from each other. Uh, the topic that uh, I've been assigned uh, this morning is scientific innovation and private sector uh, for climate resilience. Uh, let me uh, start off by saying that uh, uh, it is uh, a very uh, issue that Asia Pacific, uh, which is one of the most disaster prone regions in the world, uh, will have to dealt with, uh, not in a short, short run, but uh, in the long run. Uh, over the past decade, uh, disasters caused economic damages worth more than half a trillion dollars. And every year, uh, disasters cause massive destruction to life and property, as we have uh, witnessed today with regard to uh, the earthquake uh, in uh, Nepal uh, and most recently in uh, Kumamoto, Japan, as well as Ecuador. Uh, Thailand itself uh, is uh, not a stranger to uh, this uh, phenomenon. Uh, we have experienced the so-called century flood in the year 2011. Uh, even this year, uh, farmers in many provinces are affected by drought. Uh, building resilience of disaster is then uh, a necessity uh, to protect us from the hard-earned development uh, that we have uh, made uh, entrance and made a lot of gains uh, in the region. Uh, as you know, uh, UNFCCC has forecasted that climate change will have wide-ranging effects on the environment and on socio-economic uh, sectors, including water resources, agriculture, and food security, as well as human health, uh, terrestrial ecosystems, and biodiversity, including coastal zones. Changes in rainfall pattern are likely to lead to severe water shortages. We are witnessing now in many areas of the country in Thailand Melting of glaciers can cause also flooding and soil erosion. Rising temperature, you are well aware of, will cause shifts in crop growing season, which affect food security and changes in the distribution uh, even of disease vectors, putting more people at risk from diseases such as malaria and dengue fever in this part of the world. Temperature increase also potentially severely increase rates of extinction for many habitats and species. So besides mitigation of the greenhouse gases, uh, adaptation is a process that society like us must adapt ourselves to cope with the uncertain future. Last year, uh, we at the Ministry of Science and Technology has completed a report to UNFCCC and Jeff on technology needs assessment. There we have identified four priority sectors uh, for resiliency, uh, covering energy sector, 
agriculture sector, uh, water management system, uh, as well as uh, atmospheric uh, modeling. Uh, all the four sectors are now uh, in its implementation plan. And it's something that we have to adhere to the fact that uh, life is a bit different today than we used to. And uh, given that Thailand is still an agriculture-based society, we have a lot of homework to do, especially in turning our agriculture sector into uh, not only to try to increase uh, their GDP contribution, but how they can adapt themselves to climate change, uh, which is not easy because it's the pattern of uh, lifestyle, is the livelihood, uh, it uh, involves resistance to change. And even today, uh, in the drought season, we have been encouraging farmers who normally would uh, grow rice crops uh, over the year uh, for some uh, families uh, four crops a year uh, and during the drought time uh, we cannot afford that meaning we don't have enough water for them to grow that much so the government has been encouraging them uh, uh, voluntarily uh, so that they would stick to their uh, uh, seasonal uh, rice growing crop and then uh, in the meantime for 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 the time uh, that they are free uh, try to do something else uh, such as uh, growing alternative crops that use little water uh, for example and uh, our ministry has been helping uh, by introducing uh, a number of uh, uh, crops uh, that uh, can uh, tolerate the drought situation. Uh, uh, alternatively, we also have uh, suggestions as well as investing in a number of projects to deal with this drought season. For example, uh, we have created thousands of small reservoirs, uh, man-made reservoirs. Uh, in Thailand, uh, we call it uh, monkey cheeks, uh, according to uh, uh, His Majesty the King's uh, advice and it has been working very well. We have to do more indeed. However, it cannot be that fast, as, as fast as we want to invest because a lot of times we are dealing with uh, the property issue where we have to negotiate with the community as well as the uh, uh, landowners to, to, to uh, uh, cooperate in uh, creating these monkey sheiks. Uh, so adaptation is a, is a big issue indeed. Uh, and uh, for climate change, it entails taking the right measures to reduce the negative effects, uh, uh, covering adjustments and changes, uh, many options. And sometimes we have to make it opportunities instead of trying to just uh, correct uh, the problems. Uh, it ranges from technological options such as increased sea defense or flood-proof houses uh, on stilts to behavioral change at individual level, such as reducing uh, water usage, as I have mentioned, uh, using insecticide sprayed mosquito nets, uh, uh, even the early warning system uh, for uh, the possible extreme events, uh, such as uh, water management system, especially at the community level, uh, improve uh, risk management, and, and this is something new to the Thai society. Uh, we have to introduce the, all these uh, risk uh, measures, uh, may it be uh, risk averse or risk lovers, uh, to be able to cope with the uh, possible uh, damage that will happen in the future. And this will also include the, uh, the management of the biodiversity as well. Uh, in the in the in the uh, area uh, called uh, Wang Nam Kiao, uh, our ministry has uh, looked after a forest. Uh, it's the only forest that, that our ministry looked after for the past 48 years, uh, with a proper management system and with uh, a good model. Uh, we have been able to maintain uh, to lose less than one percentage point of the forest area. Uh, uh, by uh, 
providing the community with the proper management system and get them to agree with uh, preserving the biodiversity for their livelihood as well as for their living and revenue generation. Uh, this is a living proof that it can be done. Uh, but with our management, uh, we are going to lose a lot of forests uh, as we have lost uh, in the past. Uh, the Ministry of Science and Technology has been intensively involved in implementing STI in building resilience to climate change, uh, led by uh, three major agencies. In our ministry, we have 14. Uh, these three agencies, let me start off by, first of all, uh, the uh, Geoinformatics and Space Technology Development Agency, or uh, GISDA for short. Uh, this agency has been using uh, satellite images to monitor the country's disaster-related situations for the past 30 years. And this includes changes in spatial distribution of natural resources, of flood, of drought, uh, all the necessary data that's needed uh, for planning and management in both uh, passive and active sensors for analysis. Uh, please bear with me, I need to talk some technical parts because of the topic that I'm, I've been given. Uh, GISDA's coastal radar system is used to predict storm for early warning as well as to monitor coastal erosion and impact from ocean currents. It can also predict oil movement and impact area upon oil leak incidents, which is something that already has happened in some areas of the country, and certainly, as you know, in many areas of the world. So we need to be prepared, and this is the certainty among all the uncertainties that is gonna happen. Chisda has another tool called Web Map, Web Map Service. Web Map Service. Uh, this is for Thailand modern monitoring system, uh, which use GIS, uh, remote sensing technology with uh, two major subsystems. One is to monitor flood and drought for early warning, as well as capability to analyze pre-flood risk assessment, post-flood assessment, damage and loss assessment, as well as estimation of future disaster losses. Another subsystem is for monitoring forest fire incidents is happening now in the northern part of Thailand. Uh, and uh, accurately, JISDA has been supporting uh, by using to detect hotspots uh, up to four periods per day, uh, uh, deploying uh, from our uh, friends' uh, satellites uh, and helping to plan uh, the forest fire prevention or the haze uh, prevention uh, to mitigate uh, through the mitigating uh, mitigation center at the community and provincial level. It has been working for the past 30 days. We call it uh, 60 dangerous days, and half of it has passed. Uh, this year, through proper planning and management, we have managed to reduce over half of the hotspots that happened last year. Uh, uh, and uh, thanks to the community participation and cooperation, uh, a, a lot less hotspots happened this year. And uh, the reason we need uh, to secure cooperation from villagers is because uh, most of the hotspots that happen, whether it happens in the Thai soil or outside of Thailand, are man-made, less uh, natural. So human uh, involvement is a critical criteria. Uh, last but not least, to plan for financial resilience, GISDA's Flood Risk Assessment Mapping System, or FRAM, FRAM determines, helps to determine flood zones and floodplain boundaries to create flood insurance rate uh, map. Uh, this may sound strange to you, but it enables the business sector to obtain insurance fair prices thus reducing the risk caused by flood. So even technology and insurance can go together, work hand in hand. Uh, secondly, let me uh, highlight the fact that uh, high amplitude earthquakes in Asia have been frequently observed. 
the ground shaking could lead to damages or collapse of engineering structures, as we are well aware, especially dams resulting in large-scale disaster at the downstream communities. Uh, NASDA, or the National Science and Technology Development Agency under the ministry, has uh, the so-called seismic detection technology for dam safety, which is essential to monitor as a monitoring tool for earthquake to mitigate damages and losses. EGAT, or Thailand Electricity Generating Authority of Thailand, is a dam operator, is now collaborating with us on an ICT-based real-time monitoring and management system for dam safety. Uh, this is a project uh, installing a new automatic seismic monitoring system in 14 dams and surrounding areas. It contains seismometer that can detect the epicenter of the earthquake and contains an accelerograph that can record the earth shaking rate within 200 kilometers. This system will assess if a dam can withstand the seismic activity and allow us to determine necessary actions for earthquake protection in time. The system is promisingly effective and building up resilience among communities around the dam areas, which is important. Psychologically, the villagers or the community must be assured that there will be no da danger from uh, the burst of the dam. As for Bangkok itself, the Bangkok Metropolitan uh, uh, Governor and its vicinity uh, largely rely on the Chapia River which is the lifeblood uh, of the central plain of Thailand, in supplying fresh water. The salinity in the river is controlled by the ocean tides as well as the river discharge. Therefore, the interplay between these two factors is so crucial in determining the availability of fresh water, especially for the central plain. The salt water intrusion is intensified in the dry season. It is somewhat happening now too, when the demand of fresh water is excessively high, affecting various sectors including agriculture, industry, and waterworks. The situation further deteriorates in the face of climate change and sea level rise. The NASDA salinity intrusion forecasting and scenario-based system for the lower Chapia River has been developed to help relieve this issue. A decision support system, which includes the salinity intrusion forecasting and scenario-based planning capability is now being developed to provide decision makers the timing of the availability of fresh water in lower Chapia River. Uh, coupling with that, we also have uh, other parts of our agencies uh, helping many uh, institutions, especially hospitals, uh, to deal with the brackish water. Uh, we have developed a technology, it's a so-called reverse osmosis uh, water purifier filtering system, uh, which can be glazed by nanotechnology in order to prevent uh, the, the filter from being contaminated or uh, deteriorate uh, too quickly. So there are other technologies that uh, can be very useful, especially when the hospital cannot use uh, the water because of its uh, brackishness. Let me turn to the third and the last agency. Uh, the, we have uh, another agency which uh, has been helping the country a lot uh, in many areas. This is the Hydro and Agroinformatics Institute, or HAII for short. Uh, HAII uh, has some the so-called telemeter, uh, or telemetering system, and now they have expanded uh, this telemetering system to, to assist our neighboring countries. For example, Lao PDR. We have helped them to install a number of uh, telemeters uh, in many parts of Laos. And this is very helpful because, you know, when, when you talk about water, uh, you don't have borders. 
you see, water in Laos, water in Thailand is, is the same lifeline. Uh, Menam Kong River, for instance. Uh, it has been developed uh, since 2004 uh, to monitor the weather and water levels from remote stations and automatically display in the form of geographic information. The station consists of several sensors measuring water levels, precipitations, temperature, humidity, atmospheric pressure, solar radiation, which automatically link all the data through the transmission system, either using 3G or GPRS, of local network providers and satellite communication system. It's been very useful and easy to use. The station has a compact design but can still deliver accurate measurement and is powered by solar panel. So it's very appropriate for many uh, local areas where energy is a, uh, electricity is a problem. And then the data is displayed for Thailand at uh, a place called worldwideweb.thaiwater.net. So we have a one-stop service in a way of water man uh, monitoring system. And now we have assisted Lao PDR to create the so-called laowater.net. So the two can work together. Uh, this is the power of technology or power of the internet indeed. Uh, this measured data is being used to support uh, necessary water situation analysis for effective water management, disaster management, as well as the flood warning system uh, to ensure that uh, the information collected can reach those both during normal time for agricultural planning purpose and during water-related disasters. Uh, the agency has also developed an automated weather and water monitoring system for locals called the Media Box. Using RSS news feed technology, very simple, which allows the local administration and local people to conveniently access weather data and weather forecast through the internet. Currently, we have distributed the Media Box to local communities with the total of 695 areas nationwide. For HAII, let me uh, highlight uh, uh, the last piece of their achievement, and that is their work today in helping uh, at least uh, 60 networks of uh, community level water management system now has spread it uh, throughout the country to cover 600 villages already. This community water management system has been very powerful for a few reasons. First of all, it's something that the ministry does not just go to the village and say, use this technology and then leave. We give them knowledge, train them, and get them, them meaning the villagers, which include the young people in the village, to do it themselves. This is very important as the first prerequisite. Secondly, we have to uh, delete the old notion of high technology only fits for high economy or the top-notch industry. Not anymore. High technology can now be enjoyed by the disadvantaged, by the remote areas, by the underprivileged. And we have proved this through this community water management system. In the five minute video that I would like uh, to show now, uh, it would highlight how the local people are doing it themselves, uh, some of which can read the satellite image uh, data system. And they can help to design the waterway within the village. And in the end, once they do not have any interference in terms of how to manage water, they start to grow their revenues through sufficiency economy, which I will mention a few words after this video, please. Then I'll end my speech. Uh, this is just, thank you. <clears throat> well, for those of you who can stay longer in Thailand, uh, please be invited to visit a uh, province called Buriram uh, in this community called Ban Lim Thong.
uh, at the Nangrong district is something that we can learn from the villagers. And uh, the villagers also uh, taught us uh, the topology uh, of the area uh, because they know they have been suffering from flood uh, for 40 years and don't know how the water flood uh, the villages. Uh, and with uh, some innovations even, uh, they have uh, these uh, huge reservoirs that uh, when the flood uh, in any year uh, arrived, uh, the, the deposits would fill up uh, this big reservoir and it creates hardship because it involves a lot of expense in order to dig it uh, so that it would be as deep as it, as it used to be. The innovation is they know how the water would seep into this uh, large reservoir. So they dig a small reservoir, which has a passage uh, through which the water can run into the, the large one. And then all the deposits would be placed naturally in these small reservoirs, which is more manageable for them to dig, uh, to get rid of, the, to, to make it as deep as it used to be. So this is very simple innovation, but it's so effective for them uh, and, and, and for their uh, uh, spending uh, and investing in. And, and uh, the other good things that uh, will come after all these lessons is that uh, some villagers are now donating their, their land in order to create more monkey sheiks. It's something that you cannot, f uh, not easily being found in many localities. If they haven't gone through together these experience and lessons, something like this would never happen. So last but not least, uh, I would uh, like to offer my opinion that uh, uh, many of the things that I have mentioned uh, dealt with uh, from the supply side or the government side. But I think today we, we need a lot of uh, help and contribution from the uh, private uh, and business side as well. Uh, and I'm not just talking about CSR. Uh, we are beyond CSR today. We are now talking about uh, social business. We are now talking about social enterprise. We are, the government is now currently uh, taking good care of the cooperation issue between the public and the private sector. We have created uh, 12 uh, different groups led by the private sector. Uh, something like 70% of the, of the composition. The 30% of the public sector, uh, I for instance, is uh, the co-chair of the, of the Committee on Innovation and Productivity. Uh, we are there to support the private sector, but the initiatives mostly would come from the private sector for the society, not for their own interests. For the first time, we are seeing something different in the Thai society with the, the so-called PPP. This is a true PPP led by the, the second P, the private sector, which are normally uh, at the back seat waiting for the government incentives, not anymore. Uh, so we hope that uh, through this uh, so-called Pracharat, uh, I don't know how do you call it, it's sort of a, a, a civic state empowerment system. Uh, uh, we are hoping that uh, this will be a long-term engagement of uh, public and private participation, uh, as well as the community level participation. I think also, uh, even though it's climate change, we need to do a lot of technology development. And that, that's why in the uh, COP21, we also have to discuss about technology transfer of climate change. Uh, and in doing so, we also need the private sector to do more in innovation and in investment in research for climate change. Uh, for example, precision farming needs a lot of uh, uh, research uh, for Thailand. Uh, energy conservation system, uh, down to a very simple thing like uh, wastewater at the household level, how to manage it. This is something that the private sector can engage and can do more. Uh, and I hope is less for more, not more for less, uh, so that uh, we can go through uh, the climate change uh, with the real resiliency uh, and uh, the whole society can must work together in order to accomplish this. Uh, so 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience. I know I have uh, stolen uh, some of your uh, lunch time, uh, but I hope uh, we can learn from each other. And uh, uh, I, I am sure that uh, this uh, forum uh, will enable us uh, to be more successful uh, in uh, living in a world of climate change. Thank you very much for your attention.